Hello again everyone, it's me, your boy, Matmus. Hope you're having a wonderful day, just like these two pilots look like they're about to have as they take off in this beautiful fighter aircraft. Yes, once again we are talking about military aviation and today we are discussing the Rafale aircraft. What an interesting little fighter this is. It's very much confused with the Mirage and quite rightly so. I must admit, the many number of times people have told me to talk about this jet and I'm like, but it's just a Mirage, it's just a Mirage. And clearly it's not. Now, I'm going to say off the bat that I'm not an aviation enthusiast. So if I get anything wrong about this fighter, please correct me. I'm going to try my very best to give you an honest overview of this aircraft. So let's get going. So in the late 1950s, Dassault had scaled up the Mirage 3 into the twin-engined two-seater Mirage 4 strike aircraft. Now, with the Mirage 2000 safely launched, Dassault traversed the same road to produce the Super Mirage 4000 a scaled-up, twin-engined, potentially more capable version of the earlier fighter. It differed in one important respect, however. It featured movable canard four-planes in the intake ducts, thus producing the next generation of European canard deltas. It must of course be stated that Sweden's Saab JA-37 Vigan is excluded from this kind of category of fighter, as not only were there its four-planes fixed with moving elevators, they were solely for short field performance, tended to stall before the wing, and added little more to nothing to no combat maneuverability. While the Super Mirage 4000 undoubtedly had tremendous potential, it was overtaken by events. The American F-16 had set the standards for affordable fighter maneuverability, while the main threat of the Soviet Union at the time was also known to be developing very maneuverable fighters. This had switched the capability of aircraft needed to agility. As related in many other statements of aircraft that I've talked about, the major European nations combined their resources to produce a new agile fighter of canard delta configurations, which eventually emerged as the EF-2000 Typhoon, which I have done a video on. Now, Dassault was originally involved in this. However, the technicalities, politics, and everything else actually lost them the day for that aircraft. They demanded design leadership on the grounds that they had more experience of deltas, which was pretty true, industrial leadership on what grounds was uncertain, an unacceptably high proportion of production, national agreements, and finally, their stated weight limit virtually guaranteed that only the French SNECMA M88 turbofan would actually be suitable. This was unacceptable to other nations, however, that were involved, and it also raised questions as to whether the radar and other systems might not go the same way under French design leadership. Dassault were trying very hard, but it just didn't work. They were left pretty isolated in the aviation industry. But Dassault then provided their own standalone combat experience program, known as the Avion de Combat Experimental, later to become the Rafale. As with the Eurofighter 2000, a technology demonstrator was built. This was dimensionally slightly larger than the definitive aircraft, and was pending the development of the new SNEMCA M88 II, which was powered by two General Electric F404 augmented turbofans. This aircraft was first flown on July the 4th, 1986. It made its first public appearance as the Rafale Alpha at the Farnborough Air Show in England in September of that year. Its next appearance was two years later, and it demonstrated an impressive sustained turn rate, albeit a slow rate and slow level of 24 degrees a second. Lots of people were very impressed at this at the Farnborough 94 show, when after each flight the number of sorties was repainted on Rafale's tail to emphasise how far ahead they were of the Eurofighter 2000. Initial plans called for three main variants of this single-seater aircraft. The Rafale C fighter with a secondary attack capability, the two-seater Rafale B and D as either a conversion trainer or an attack aircraft with a secondary air superiority role, and the Rafale M, a dedicated single-seater fighter attack aircraft. Rafale C was to be the primary air superiority fighter for the French Air Force, but the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact and the breakup of the Soviet Union effectively removed the perceived threat. This caused a major rethink. A priority was to replace the elderly Jaguar attack aircraft, and this mission now assumed greater importance. Pilot workload was high, and the operational experience of the French Jaguars in the Gulf War of 1991 clearly demonstrated the advantages of the two-man crew. The result was that the French Air Force requirements were drastically revised to include the majority of two-seater aircraft. Economic considerations have delayed many French orders of the Raphael at the time, 
and they received only 12 between 1999 and 2003, in which the deliveries for the Air Force were scheduled to start. To date, the export orders have pretty much failed to materialize as good as they should have worldwide, although the Mirage 2000 is still selling. It seems probable that the nations to afford Raphael still go into something better in the future. The Finnish aircraft is pretty much a very attractive looking fighter. It's dealt to win closely approximating that of the Mirage 2000, with the leading edge extensions at the roots. The tips have rails for the Magic 2 missiles. The canard four planes are set just above the inlets, where they are pinging least on the pilot's view out of the window. However, in my eyes, they have a lot less authority and kind of a stern look than the Typhoon does. Where the Rafale really takes its differences is the intakes themselves. An early design study featured a chin intake of the type seen on the F-16, but this was a complete departure from the semicircular inlets previously favoured by Dassault, and in any case would have involved a deeper fuselage. The solution adopted was to combine the best features of both, with the inlets plain as the Mach 2 capability was not a requirement. Located just under the fuselage bulge, which acted as more of the forebody to a smooth airflow at the high alpha, much like the strakes on the F-A-18. The canard foreplanes are located on each of these bulges. Much of the wing structure and fuselage cladding is of CFC, with Kevlar at the extreme rear, while the canard and leading edge slats are of titanium alloy. For propulsion, unlike the M53, the M88 is used to power the Raphael and is a genuine twin spool turbofan. While the Dash 2 motor is used for pre-production Raphaels, the addition of a modified two-stage compressor and low-pressure turbine should increase the projector maximum thrust to 23,600 pounds or 10,706 kilograms, increasing the thrust loading to 1.46, which is a remarkable setup in fighter configuration. This will of course be rather less than the navalized Raphael M, stressed for carrier landings and catapult launches with beefed up landing gear, arrestor hook and nose wheel strut. It's significantly heavier than the land based Rafale. In terms of more performance, although the maximum brochure speed of the Rafale is stated at Mach 1.8, pre-production models have in fact exceeded Mach 2. Super Cruise has also been demonstrated, although the actual speed attained has not been actually released. The roll rate is a sparkling 270 degrees a second, while the instantaneous turn exceeds 30 degrees a second, and Rafale is stressed for loadings of plus 9 to minus 3.2 Gs. For carry operations, landing alpha is somewhat high at 16 to 18 degrees, but this is considered not a problem by the French Air Force and French Navy. Rafale has a glass cockpit with a wide angle holographic H-up display and three multifunctional displays, one of which is head level, as in the Mirage 2000-5. These are backed by a helmet mounted sight which can be used to acquire and designate off-site boresight targets when the pilot has his hands full with HOTAS. There's also voice controls that can be used. A vocabulary of 37 words, surprisingly in English and French, is projected. The seat is raked at an angle of 29 degrees to provide greater G tolerance, while the side stick controller has a replace control column. The radar is a multi-mode Radar A Bellage, or Electronic RBE-2. This is the first European fighter radar to use a phased array antenna. The antenna is fixed, and the actual scanning is steered electronically. It can operate in more than one mode at a time, changing from one to many others per second, and has far more potential and flexibility than that of trainable antennas. Range is rather greater than the Mirage 2000 at 54 nautical miles or 100 kilometers, even in look-down mode. Tracking parameters are probably similar, and at least four targets can be engaged simultaneously. The RBE-2 is backed by the Optronique Secteur Frontal, or OSF, consisting of an IRST FLIR and a laser range finding system. Maximum range of the OSF is in ideal conditions is 43 nautical miles or 80 kilometers. A full EW suite is carried, electronic warfare that is, including the missile launch detector as described in the past for Mirage 2000. For stealth, it does have some low observable features and has incorporated into the Rafale many different systems that most of them are actually classified and it's quite hard to find information that is preceding this to be stealthy. It's not really a stealth aircraft to be honest. The fin and fuselage junction was modified with the RAM applied which is a kind of uh, coating and uh, the canopy was gold filmed, but as in Typhoon, these stealth measures were probably only to reduce Rafale's RCS to about one fifth. So really, it's not designed to be a stealth aircraft. They say it has stealth capabilities, but 
technology has gone through the roof in detecting stealth aircraft today, and I really don't think Rafale is, is hitting that level to get away from radar and not be detected. The aircraft can carry payloads of up to 9 tons on 14 hardpoints for the Air Force version, with 13 for the naval version. The range of the weapons includes the Mica, Magic, Sidewinder, Asram, Amram, Air-to-Air -air Missiles, the Apache, AS-30L, Alarm, Harm, Maverick, PGM-100 air-to-ground missiles, Exocets, AM-39s, Penguin 3s, Harpoon and ship missiles. Folks, you name it, this thing can pretty much carry it in a European standpoint. For strategic missions, the Rafale can deliver the MBDA, formerly Aerospastal, ASMP standoff nuclear missile. In December 2004, the MBDA Storm Shadow and Scalp EG standoff cruise missile was qualified also on this aircraft. In September 2005, the first flight of the MBDA Meteor, or BVRAAM, Beyond Visual Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, was conducted on the Rafale fighter. In December 2005, successful flight trials were carried out on the Charles de Gaulle of the range of the Rafale's weapon systems of the Exocet, Scalp EG, Mica, ASMP Alpha to replace the ASMP and Meteor missiles with great success. In April 2007, the Rafale carried out the first firing of the Segem AASM precision guided bomb, which both has GPS and inertial guidance, and optionally image infrared thermal guidance. Rafale has been equipped with the ASSM from 2008 and is still using them today. Rafale can carry six ASM missiles, with each aiming to hit the target within 10 meters of accuracy. The aircraft has a twin gun pod and a Nexter, formerly Gayat, 30mm DEFA 791B cannon, which can fire 2,500 rounds per minute. The Rafale is equipped with laser designation pods for laser guidance of air-to-ground missiles. Despite only truly being adopted by France, Egypt, Qatar, and now India, Rafale has garnished some of its interests with governments around the world, including Brazil, Canada, Kuwait, Libya, Malaysia, Singapore, Switzerland, South Korea, and United Arab Emirates. While it has not been an outright successful in any of these bids, it has generated considerable interest and consideration for the fact that this aircraft is very capable of what it needs to do, especially in its recent combat actions, which has served very well in its marketing endeavours. France has really hit a bit of a winner with this aircraft as their own sort of creation. It does what it needs to do, and I would kind of put it on the basis of a sort of undefined or unrefined Eurofighter 2000 program that didn't really need help from anyone else. They did their own thing and good for them, for the French people uh, and the French military to create a product that is doing very well for itself and completes the mission day in day out. You know, it doesn't need stealth aircraft, it doesn't need all this fancy stuff going on. In terms of what's going on today, well, as of December 2019, the French Air Force announced the initial operating capacity for its new batch of F-3R upgraded Rafale fighters. So they're still pushing strong, and you know, India has actually taken delivery in October of this year for its uh, first Rafale multi-role fighter, and the event was held in France on October 8th, 2019. So the aircraft still has a lot of punch left in it, and it's going to be around for here for quite a while, I'm sure, more to stay, and good for it. As I said, I think it's pretty good at what it needs to do. It has a lot of capability. Uh, the capability of weapon systems that it can carry is insane. You know, it can pretty much punch every European weapon system that's out there uh, from its hard points if it needs to. Very fast, very maneuverable. Uh, I have uh, spoken to people in the past who have said to me that they know of people who have used this aircraft and absolutely love it. Um, I would love to speak to a pilot and see what they think of it. It almost seems like, you know, a very similar kind of concept to, I guess, a European F-16. You know, the Eurofighter, the Mirage, uh, the Gripen, and then obviously the Rafale. Lots of sort of short, agile little aircraft that can dot around and do what they need to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. Please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your opinion on this aircraft. And again, if I did get anything wrong, please feel free to correct me. If you did enjoy today's video, leave me a like and hit the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming videos in the future. If you want to support my channel, and thank you to everyone who has been, you can go check out my Patreon page. It is in the description box below, along with all my other social media and craziness that you may want to go and go check out. Just pop down at the bottom and look at some of those links. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you everyone for watching today. Have a wonderful time for the rest of your day. Goodbye.